Hi everybody, we're back again, and we are on part 14 of the 16-part series, the college application process for rising seniors and anyone else who wants to know. So right away, I'm heading for part 14, and this is actually, um, I try to be really positive in all of these things and say, here, here's all these things that you're supposed to do. But it, we do kind of have to have this one session where we speak in the negative and we, we talk about don't do it. The things that you should avoid doing in the college application process. I'm going to keep it pretty short because the don't do it list is pretty simple. I mean, it, it's, it is common sense when you stop and think about it, but you'd be surprised at how many people make some of these common mistakes and it really uh it, it can come back to bite you. you you know you could make a a very poor mistake and and be very well intended you, you might have the the best interest of you at heart you as a parent you might have the best interest of your your child at heart but sometimes the things that that we do just mess up the system and get in the way so here is a quick list of some of my things that I would say just just don't do it. And this is really only my personal list. These are things that I've seen uh, people do, and I I just uh, I'll give you a few examples as we go along. So, get me my face out of the way here. Uh, behaviors to avoid in the college application process. There's there's this uh, there are these two approaches, and, and one uh, is, is the laissez-faire approach where, you know, the student and the parent is just completely hands-off and says, we'll figure it out at some point, and just kind of go with the flow and let the chips fall where they may. You don't want to be too casual about the college application process. You want to be pretty diligently involved. The opposite we'll talk about in a minute is uh, kind of that hyperactive approach, like um, you know you're you're on top of things so much that a college admissions counselor, for example, might say, you know, make this parent go away, or you know, this person keeps calling me with questions that are right on the front page of the website. It's like open the website, and take a look, you know. Uh, there you kind of could fall into one of two camps, or you might fall into both camps uh, at any given moment. So one big problem with the laissez-faire approach is when a student is, is going to say, well, mom's going to do it for me. And it might not be the student's fault. It might actually be the parent that, I mean, it makes sense, right? These are your kids. Um, you are more invested in your child than you are in anything else in your life. And I get it, I'm a parent as well. And I've probably overstepped my bounds as a parent uh, on more than one occasion. Uh, no probably about it, I have, right? But you, we as parents have to, we have to condition ourselves some, sometimes to back off and say, if my son or daughter doesn't do it, it's not gonna get done. And that's okay because it's not my fault, right? Um, so moms, dads, know when to back off. Sons, daughters, those of you that are actually the applicants to go to college, don't expect mom to do all of it. So that relationship has to be worked out between parent and child, and um, it has to be clear who's going to do what. If somebody needs to call the admissions office to ask a question, make the student do it, right? Don't don't get into the habit of, of mom mom being the one or dad being the one to say, um, well, I'll, I'll call and ask this question. Student do it, okay? Um, don't do everything at the last minute. Don't say, oh, I work better under pressure. I work better with deadlines. Baloney, okay? Get things done as well in advance as you can so that you are never pressured by a deadline. Easier said than done. I've done things at the last minute, uh, but when it comes to college admissions, deadlines are deadlines. There's no extensions, so um, they are not kind to procrastination, nor should they be. 
So if you do things at the, or you wait to the last minute and the power goes out or you get sick or, you know, something gets rescheduled, who knows what could happen. Um, if you wait till the last minute, you're going to put yourself in a, in a, in a pinch and you might not be able to get out of it. Don't expect other people to constantly remind, well, my counselor didn't tell me. My teacher didn't tell me. My mom didn't tell me. Nobody else's responsibility to do anything. Uh, you're the leader. The student is the leader of the college admissions process. Uh, you can apply to any school that you want to. You know, mom and dad honestly can't tell you that you can or cannot apply to a certain college. It's your life. You're going to be the adult. You're the one in charge. If you want to do whatever you want to do, then you need to take responsibility for what you're going to do. If you sit around waiting for other people to do things and, and waiting uh, for people to remind you to do things, then uh, you, you're going to have a hard time. On the opposite side of things uh, is, is the hyperactive approach. Don't brag. Do not brag. A college admissions application is about identifying the qualities and things about you that are positive. So if you are, uh, if you won awards for your participation in sports, include them on uh, the part, the appropriate part of your application, you know, and, and that's essentially going to be a list. So if you made all conference in soccer, put it under the section that says honors and awards. That's the appropriate place for it. But if then you go and write your college essay about winning the award, that's bragging. And that's trying to say, look how great I am. Look how great I am. And it is, uh, it comes off as, uh, it, it, it's a put off, actually. Uh, it could sound desperate. It could sound, um, it's not, it could sound like you're full of yourself. So uh, avoid the bragging and, um, you know, that goes for mom and dad, too. You know, when you find yourself on a, on a college tour, college visit, and you're talking to somebody from the admissions office, don't stand there and fawn over your child and tell them what a wonderful person they are. Talk about the things like, they're so excited to be here. This is such a wonderful place. Uh, I think this would be a good fit for my son or daughter. Um, you... You have to understand that these colleges see lots of wonderful young people. And if you uh, are trying to get ahead of the, the, the other student or that other family uh, by making it a contest, you're going to lose. Don't grovel. Uh, don't say things like, this college is my son or daughter's biggest dream. And if she doesn't get in here, I don't know what she's going to do. Uh, that is not going to be very appealing uh, to college admissions. Um, you know, you can say things like, well, this place is really nice. I think it would be a good fit. Um, here's why I think it would be a good fit. Um, but you want to avoid arrogance and desperation and bragging and groveling are going to lead you right down those two paths. Um, when a college admissions application says two letters of recommendation, do two. Don't do five. You are going to tax your resources and you're going to be giving a lot of people a lot of extra work to do um, and nobody's going to read them. If you're going to submit an application and they say two letters of recommendation, you submit two because those are the only two they're going to read. If there's five in the application packet, three of them are not going to get read. So uh, don't exceed the allowances or the requirements of the application. Follow the directions. For example, on Common App, there is an extra space that they'll say, are there any other additional facts that we need to know about you. Um, that should be used very, very sparingly. Only use that if 
there is something that could not fit somewhere else on the application. Don't use it as a, as a place to embellish uh, accomplishments. Uh, they're going to go through that. They, that's just, it's going to be a turnoff. So don't exceed allowances or requirements. Use them only uh, for, um, for what they're intended. So if you're going through your college application and you have you did an internship or you wrote uh, you wrote a special paper or you have a portfolio for art and you can't figure out where that goes in the application consult your counselor they'll help you um, don't be so uh, obsessive about your application that you're afraid they're going to miss something that you included in that application if you put something in in a, uh, your your soccer award goes in the the honors and awards and you're that's really important to you and you're afraid they're going to miss that and so you become obsessed with the idea of, of repeating it as many other times as you can so you write about it in your essay and you have people in your letters of recommendation mention it you know over and over again it's it's it becomes uh, it becomes excessive uh, the, the next one is kind of the hi, it's me again. And this these are the, the endless uh, questions. And I'm not talking about to your high school counselor. Your high school school counselor, you, you can see us as many times as you want. We can tease you. It's like, you know, oh, it's you again? You know, and, and but that's okay. But a, an admissions counselor, want, they might want to see you in an interview. They want to see your application. They might want to see you do a school visit and take a tour, but that's it. If you have a burning question that you can't find the answer to anywhere else, contact them. But if it becomes a you know one of those repetitive things where the school counselor or the the college counselor is looking at their email inbox and it's like, there he is again, over and over and over again, many many emails with lengthy emails. It's okay to ask your questions, but um, again, start with your high school counselor to see what we can answer first, see what you can find for answers on the, the website, and then take those unanswered questions and go to admissions and ask them that. A well-timed, well-placed question is very good. 50 um, poorly planned questions that you could have answered in a million different ways, not going to help you. The biggest problem that I see is uh, applicants to college deflecting responsibility. When something doesn't go right, they're quick to blame other people. It was mom's fault. I actually heard a student in my office, actually more than one, say, well, mom didn't check her email. And I said, well, wait a minute. Why, did, why was mom supposed to check the email? Well, we put mom's email address on the college application so that she would get the emails. No, that's that's bad news. That is that is absolutely the wrong thing to do. The student email should be the email address that you use and the student should be checking the email regularly. Once you submit a college application, be watching the email and and take care of things from a student level, not from a mom and dad level. Um, procrastinate and expect to be bailed out. You know, um, missing deadlines, as I said, the college isn't going to give a lot of uh, support to people that procrastinate and wait till the last minute. If there is a major snowstorm or something like that that disrupts power or the mail or things like that, um, yeah, colleges will probably give you a little help. COVID-19, there's going to be some flexibility there. But... Um, if it's just a normal circumstance and you try to do everything the night before, they're not going to help you. Don't be impatient. right? If, if you've planned ahead and you've thought some things out, you've had some conversations, um, let, things have to take, take their, the, have to run through a process. Um, and all of the people that are working with you are also working with hundreds, if not thousands, 
of other people. Remember that your school counselor is working with um, about 250 students on their own caseload. They're also working with teachers in the building, with parents, with uh, college counselors and so forth. There's a lot of moving parts. If you send out an email, don't expect the answer within 30 seconds. If it comes back that soon, bonus. But give it a day or two to get answers uh, to your questions. Uh, a lot of busy people in there, so be patient. What do you do instead? So let's turn this around and be a pot. Instead of being a, a complainer and saying, don't do this, don't do that, don't bother me, don't bother them, what do you do instead? Be a leader. Taking charge of your uh, process is impressive. And when a student is confident, is vocal, asks good questions, and um, offers good insight, uh, has a, a well-edited essay, all of those kinds of things, that's all wonderful. So be a leader. Be involved. If it's your college experience that you're looking to start, and so um, be involved in the entire process. I can give you all kinds of horror stories. Um, you know, I've had parents call me after their students were in college, and the parent is calling me back to say, well, how, how are we supposed to handle uh, this situation? I, my daughter's roommate brought beer into the room. How are, what, what do I do? Uh, the answer is going to be pretty clear speak to your son or daughter, work out a scenario where your son or daughter is going to do something. Um, it's That is not a situation where a young adult is going to have mom or dad um, step in to bail them out. So the individual, the student, needs to be involved and they need to take leadership of a situation. Um, uh, yeah, I, I know uh, for a fact that I have seen uh, parents actually fill out the applications for their kids. Like they do all of the paperwork. Uh, in many instances, I've seen where a student didn't even know that their college application had been submitted. I saw a scenario where one student applied to 19 colleges, which is about 10 too many. And... Um, the student didn't realize that uh, that they had applied to more than two or three. Uh, the parent had sent in all of these other ones for them. So that is a very uninvolved student. That is a student that is not taking leadership over their own uh, their own process. And again, I, I'm going to tell you if if you if you can't be a leader and you can't be involved in the process, you're going to struggle as a college student. So you've got to master those couple of things. Be assertive. Right, I get reminders from students all the time. They'll send me an email, and, and if they don't hear right away, they might follow up with a phone call, or they might pop into my office and say, hey, did you get my email? Um, that's actually a good thing. That's actually a good thing. Um, because people get very busy with a lot of other things, and, and it's okay to give those, those general reminders. In fact, the Common App is set up for you to do exactly that with your teachers that are going to write letters of recommendation. You know when they have submitted them. So if you ask them and a month goes by and they still haven't done it, you can go back to them and say, hey, do you remember me inviting you uh, to write my letter of recommendation? And, uh, oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. I'll get right on to that tonight. You know, those kinds of things are, are helpful. It's your college application, and you should be assertive. Be responsible. You know, that's where I go back to the idea of not blaming anybody else. It's your job to know deadlines, to know the tasks that you're supposed to do, to ask the questions that need to be asked. So own the responsibility. If you forget something or miss something, own it. Say, I missed it. I, I need some help. Uh, that's okay. But don't uh, try to blame other people or pass off responsibilities to other people. And above all, be patient. You're probably going to submit a college application sometime in November. You might not hear back from that university until late March. 
So that's November, December, January, February, March. It could take five months for you to hear back from the universities. Um, that's going to take a lot of patience. So don't be afraid to be patient. Um, so uh, essentially, if you can look at these five things, lead, be involved, be assertive, be responsible, and be patient, and your college application uh, process is going to be rewarding. It's going to be, it'll actually be fun and interesting. If you don't do these things on this list, then um, it's, it's going to be tough. So those are kind of, of, of some of the general do's and don'ts about a college application. And uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope it stirred some thought and it'll create a little conversation between student and parents. Uh, I hope it also generates some conversation between student, parents, and your school counselor um, because it, it's, it's great to, um, while I was talking in very general terms, when you think about how these, these scenarios come out in the specifics, we're all guilty of them. And um, when there's good communication, uh, you, can, uh, you can help to uh, keep them to a minimum. So I hope this was helpful, as I said, and, uh, and this was part 14. We're getting close to the end. Uh, part 15 will be coming right up, and hope to see you then. Bye-bye.